Today, we are talking to Rhonda Gass, Vice President and Chief Information Officer for Stanley Black & Decker. As CIO, Rhonda is driving a strategic agenda to equip the company's businesses with the digital, data, and collaboration capabilities required to win and grow in the global marketplace. So when we're talking about business and we're talking about a manufacturing company, I think the moment we uh, think about that, I think the one, I, I, one buzzword that is coming to mind right now, Industry 4.0, I know it's much more than a buzz, buzzword. There are multiple technologies involved. There are multiple platforms involved. Um, there's IT, there's OT as well. From your role as a CIO, how do you see uh, yourself enabling uh, the, the manufacturing side of the house in um, using the technologies related to Industry 4.0 and how will those uh, help uh, business get better? Uh, what is S uh, Stanley's uh, vision in this area? Excellent, excellent question. And as you know, you and I both know, technology permeates everything we do. So it's not just the domain of the IT organization. There are technologists everywhere throughout the company. And so um, how do we envision that being harnessed? So the way we think about the landscape at Stanley Black & Decker is, BT, or business technology, and this is the technology that's used to run the company, the entire business architecture, whether it's front office, middle of the, middle of the house, or, or back of the house, you know, your typical business functions. That's clearly the IT domain, and, and we've, we've, we've got that one um, all sewed up. But some of those same technologies, cloud, mm -hmm. um, IoT, can be used in the manu on the manufacturing floor. Mm -hmm. And that's the OT environment, very much focused on machine-to-machine -machine kind of automation. Um, those will eventually or, or will need to bridge with that BT technology. So we're very focused on um, the cybersecurity in both spaces, right. lots of commonality, and then the way those two spaces talk to each other. Right. Now, there's a third one you didn't bring up, which is equally important to us, is around our CT our commercial technology. So right. we're doing a lot of digital work, mm -hmm. um, automating our tools, having our tools talk to mobile apps, um, looking at construction tech as an area that needs um, automation and needs digitization. And so that's also an area. And these three talk to each other to really be extreme and great. Um, so we're focused on those interactions and the privacy and security all around. Rhonda, you know, there is the technology side that we just spoke about. But there is more to technology. There's the cultural side, there's the functional side, uh, both equally important, I believe, to drive uh, the, the values that we want to drive from business. How do you measure that element of, you know, what efficiency are we bringing in from the cultural functional side? How do you measure the effectiveness? Uh, because those are very important functions as well that uh, you are responsible for. Yeah, and that's a very, very good question because some of these things are really difficult to measure, right? You try to measure adoption. We go back to our performance roots, which we're very strong in financial performance, mm -hmm. delivering financial results. Uh, core, you know, we've been around since 1843, so it's just built into our core. And so when we approach a transformational project or a functional transformation of sorts, we set up ROI. We try to look at TCO. We hold the project accountable to that, that overall return on investment. But I'd say that's the easier measure, even though they're usually pretty tough and difficult mm -hmm. to achieve. But we also look at things like number of systems retired, um, the adoption rate or the usage profiles of our users. We set up a pretty, pretty strong change management. In fact, we have inside of our performance resiliency team, a whole team dedicated to change management for these transformation programs. That's interesting. So it's... Art and science trying to come together to ensure we're driving value because value, as you know, is efficiency and effectiveness. Efficiency a little easier to measure, effectiveness a little harder, but we're we're working pretty hard to try and make sure we capture those elements as well. So an in-house change management team? Yes, in-house change management team. And uh, so, again, that sounds like, uh, uh, you know, a lot to deliver from that team's perspective. Again, how do you focus the goals, objectives of that team uh, within your idea yes, of so I, They're a highly sought after team. Yes. So yes. Um, and so what we try to do is focus them on the highest return on investment programs, okay. the highest transformation, you know, the ones that are transforming the most. So a HR functional transformation or 
uh, an IT functional transformation that we might be doing and focus them on those really high impact programs, not um, not your not every project in the in the IT portfolio as an example. But let's focus on what's important in today's world. I mean, everybody's talking about climate change. There's a renewed focus on sustainability. I see a lot of work companies spending the extra mile to try and talk about how they are uh, trying to meet the sustainability goals that they're sure. trying to set for themselves. Uh, what what do you think about that, and how are you and Stanley thinking about the same as well? I am so glad you asked me that question because I'm very proud of the way Stanley Black and Decker is approaching it. Um, you know, we started with the E part of ESG, where we're really focused on environmental um, health and safety and, and those types of things. We have a, a robust roadmap and key objectives that we're um, not only hitting, but uh, exceeding. So we're, we're doing really well there. But we've really begun focusing on the, the S, the, the, the social and the, and the um, governance piece as well. And so it's a broad spectrum, not just across E or, but the whole thing in ESG. Um, for the social area, you know, diversity, equity, and inclusion, um, we don't just talk about it. We're, we're taking very measured concrete actions. I can give you an example. My leadership team mm-hmm. is 56% female. Now, that didn't happen in the first year. Um, but in almost year 10, you know, that's been accomplished. That's impressive. We are signed up for the paradigm for parity. And we have set a goal by 2030 to be gender um, equity, to have gender equity across the company. So it's a bold goal. Um, but we uh, like to set bold targets like extreme innovation, right? right. Um, so that's underway. And then governance is hugely important as well. It's a, a word that in this day and age, in this world, I know we wake up every morning wondering what the, the big surprise event um, could be. There's COVID, there's war, there's there's all kinds of things that are, are taking our attention. And we're seeing that that governance is more and more important as part of our over ESG strategy. No, I agree. I think this is uh, well said, Ron. I think all of the, you know, sustainability is only one aspect of the entire ESG that, that comes through. And, uh, you know, I absolutely agree with what you said. Certainly an important one, but uh, if there's more to it, to your point. So, so Rhonda, you know, HCL has been a partner with you for the last couple of years. Uh, what role in your mind has HCL played as part of uh, you know, your IT organization and your success? Oh, wow. So um, you're right. We have been together now for two years. Incidentally, right when COVID started, we right. decided this was a good time to start our partnership. Um, and I think we've come a long way when I reflect back on where we were and the joint decision we made to move forward despite the surprise of COVID and how, how that might interoperate. We've done some amazing things together. So, Rhonda, a part of this entire engagement, we'd also set up a center in Hartford. Uh, obviously, because of pandemic and everything else, the people have been a little delayed coming to that center. How do you see this entire Hartford strategy evolving with Stanley and HCL working together for the connectivity market? Yeah, so great to to bring that up. Um, We have uh, a long history in Hartford, Connecticut around manufacturing and manufacturing capability. Um, There are companies all over the region, um, as you know, um, that are engaged in manufacturing. So we have our manufactory um, in downtown Hartford, very close to where your facility is located. And we see it as a collaboration um, space. And so with having HCL there, our partner in all things technology, that that collaboration is only going to be enhanced um, through that investment. So, uh, Rhonda, Stanley's obviously experienced some record growth when you look at the 2021 results. Absolutely. What role has the IT tech stack played in that and what challenges does it bring to the table? Oh, wow. So, yes, thank you. In fact, we've had a phenomenal year. In 2021, we closed with 17% organic growth um, during Excuse just, you know, supply chain crisis after yes. another and, uh, so we're very proud of what we've been able to do there. In addition, um, you may have seen, and I know you've seen, we announced the acquisition of another, what, $3 billion worth of, of um, companies yes. around um, outdoor products. So we're building a whole new platform um, a- adjacent to our tools and storage business and our industrial businesses, but will be three you know, diversified platforms within um, the, the Stanley Black & Decker umbrella. Um, and uh, that's how we're thinking about the technology and supporting the business. It's interesting that you talk about uh, the acquisition as a platform as well. Yes. So, you know, obviously, uh, you know, it's, it's the way things are evolving uh, from your perspective as well. 
Do you see, uh, you know, I know that behind these technologies, there's a lot of uh, older infrastructure, etc. that's obviously been there, it has been there for, for, for the time that it has been there. How do you see the two coming together? The modern platforms and the older technologies that have been part of the environment and I think for every CIO bringing the two, two together is a, is all, is a challenge. Yes, it's a daunting challenge in that once you touch the application stack, as you well know, you're touching that business user who then has to take action to change. Um, so we've done a lot of work to change the things that we can that are invisible, move to the cloud, um, change out, you know, and modernize your infrastructure, change your operating system. Now, the other thing in our uh, playing in our advantage is not just the transformation uh, agenda, but also the security, the privacy and right. compliance agenda that this change is required. So Rhonda, uh, you know, you are a woman leader in technology. And I'm sure you are asked this question, but I want to, you know, is there or was there an inspiration for you that led you the, to the path of STEM and, uh, you know, technology as your area of focus? And uh, I would just extend that a little further. What is it, what is the advice that you would want to give to other women leaders who are at this point of time trying to uh, figure out their direction and how to make themselves successful? In IT. Excellent, excellent question. And, you know, when I was coming up, there weren't many females at all, um, either in my engineering courses, it really math for that matter. Um, but my inspiration, and this sounds uh, may, maybe not the, the perfect truth, but it is absolutely the truth would be my father. And my father said, you, you know, you're my daughter, you're not my son, but you can do anything you want to do. This is the, the, the wonder of the world that we live in. You can do anything you want to do, and the only limitation is yourself. And so if you want to go pursue math and there are no other girls in the math class, go do it. Well, he also knew that I wasn't good at sports. So I think that that was his way of kind of channeling me in an area where I excelled and then, you know, setting me free, so to speak. So what I would say to, um, you know, young women who are coming up in the STEM career, don't be, don't be afraid of it. Yes, there aren't as many role models as there should be, but we're we're changing that, and there are more and more of us um, in, in the field, um, and experiment. Um, take a chance. Take a risk. Do it early in your career because that's the, the real time to, um, you know, take, those, take some of those risks, and you're going to find what you really, really love and like, and when you do, run with it. So, Rhonda, here's the most difficult question. <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> How do you manage work-life balance? Well, you started that, you ended that wrong. It's not work-life balance. I am a firm believer you cannot have it all. Sorry. Um, but it's work-life integration. And particularly over the last two years, as you walk from your kitchen to your to your office and to your bedroom, back to your office, um, it's all about Long that integration. It's a very short walk, by the way. <laughs> um, but it's um, it's finding the right integration that works for you. You know, I've probably lean a little towards the workaholic side, but, uh -huh. you know, it works for me. That's not going to work for everyone, but it's important that you find that integration that, that does work for you. So it's easy for you to say you're a workaholic, but I'm pretty <laughs> sure you uh, would want to find some time to unwind. Uh, how do you do that? And what's, what's your favorite uh, uh, time for peace? I mean, yes, yes. So there are a couple of things. So I can talk about what we're doing at Stanley Black & Decker. We've encouraged our teams to have a focus Friday where they refrain um, from scheduling meetings and build in some think time on Fridays. And then for me personally, I love to be able to get out and walk. And so what I've done, and I don't, I don't listen to tapes, books on tape, I don't listen to music. It's just complete silence while I'm outside breathing fresh air. Um, and I solve problems that I don't go out there to solve, but it could be a personal problem. It can be something I'm struggling with, but the answer comes to me at some point while I'm walking. So it's a thinking time. It's my thinking time again, but, um, and I take away excuses. I don't, I don't know about you, but you can always say, well, it's getting dark or it's kind of rainy today or living in Connecticut, it's cold. Right. Um, so I have all the gear. You have it ready. Um, I have a, a flashlight. I have the headlight. I mean, you've got everything you need so that there's no excuses. 
Um, and it's good for your mental health, and it's good for, you know, problem solving so Rain, well. shine, or snow. We rain, find shine, or snow. outside yeah, yeah, on a yeah. Friday evening. I've got a really, really good North Face jacket that, <laughs> that keeps off the rain. Fantastic. Yoranda, it was great having you here, a part of these sessions. I think there's a lot of learning that you uh, gave all of us. Great. You know, I think uh, thank you very much for, for, for being with us. Thank you for having me. Enjoyed it. Fantastic. Mm -hmm.